<laughs> I'm not sure I like that look. <laughs> mm, I had singing lessons last night. Oh wow, you were you had a book day yesterday. I was book day. <laughs> book day. I believe that's why my back's a little tender. Mm. Well, yeah, skiing and then working out and then dry needling, <laughs> like dry needling and then hanging with the kids. Oh man, Jimmy has those two girls and they love to wrestle when I'm there, so I'm just wrestling the entire time. Do you think I should take a break? Maybe <laughs> rest, rest a little bit. Possibly. Nah, man. <laughs> Hey, what's happening, you guys? And welcome to the Proclivity Pod, 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 Podcast. I tossed it in there differently. See, you guys, we don't do the, like, cookie cutter uh, intro. It's original every single time. You know why? Emily, why? Because we're original. <laughs> yes. She said it like it was a question, but she really meant it as a statement. <laughs> Welcome to the Proclivity Podcast. My name is Joel Cochran. I am your host. I'm here with co-host Emily Rodella. And today what we're going to be talking about is how to create true change. There's a lot of us out there who want change, who truly want, who know that they're going through something, they don't like it, and they want to change, whether it's their diet, whether it's personal with themselves in a relationship, at work. But how do they create the change? We're going to talk to you guys about that, how to be able to create the change, why people aren't changing, the cost of inaction when it comes to change. We're going to tell you our three steps to change, and then we're going to walk you through just a little step-by-step, -step. okay? A little step-by-step -step where you're going to pull out your pen, pull out your paper, and you're going to get change moving. And this is all in our daily drive. So 20 minutes or less. We got a lot to do, so we might as well get started. You ready? Mm -hmm. Let's go. Okay. First question is, why is it that people don't make the change? They're suffering, right? They're Maybe they're overweight. Maybe they have high blood pressure. Maybe they have a poor identity with themselves, a bad relationship. They don't like their job. Why do people not change? It's <sighs> a great question. <laughs> yeah, hammered. <laughs> I hammered. If you want to take some time to think about that, you can. Oh, man. Seriously, though, highly recommend if you pause this podcast right now and sit with that question for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> first thing that comes to mind for me is the resistance to change, right? We're in a routine. Yeah. And when we go out of that, it's uncomfortable. And it's not the easy, usual routine. Right. And so to, right. in order to create change, you have to change. Mm, nothing changes until something changes. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of fear when it comes to change. Mm -hmm. Why is there a lot of fear when it comes to change? Fear of the unknown, fear oh, of failing. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when it comes to the unknown, if we feel unsafe in our current situation, right? with ourselves, we don't have enough confidence, right? To step into something unknown is even more scary because it's even more unsafe. And we talk about it, we've talked about it in, in past episodes, but we, we truly, we come from two soils when it comes to our actions and our emotions. We have the soil of fear that we can plan in or the soil of safety that we can plan in. Really everything comes from that joy, love, Kindness comes from a safe place, right? You don't see a little kid, right, in total fear running around playing with his toys. No, he feels totally safe. He's in his house with mom and dad. He feels super safe, so he gets to express joy. When we're around family and friends that we know and trust, we get to be our true authentic self. We feel very safe. But we flip to the other side where we have fear, and fear can produce doubt, insecurity. When we are planting there, that's where we go, ooh, yeah, I don't know if I can be my true authentic self here. I don't know if I can trust myself. What are they going to think? These things start popping up. And so being able to find 
safety within yourself by doing some inner work. Oh, snap. Self-improvement goes beyond just the macros and micros, right? Exercising and so on and so forth. Being able to dive into how you are feeling, how you perceive your world. It's very important. So being able to have a place of safety right now before going into the unknown definitely helps. Yet, do you feel like we need it? Or can we just take the step? Say that question one more time. Ooh, I, I tricked her, you guys. Mm -hmm. That's right. We'll take it. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> do you believe that we need safety to be able to take the step towards change? Mm -hmm. Or can we, little birdie style, just leap? Oh, that's a good question too. Uh, I think we need some safety within ourselves first to say, hey, I can take this leap of faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that it's not going to be scary, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember right. walking into a CrossFit gym the first time? Right. And that was scary. But even having the thought of like, hey, no matter what, I'm going to be okay with this, whatever happens here today. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. So uh, taking a look at it, change can be hard, you guys. Mm -hmm. We get it. Yet let's take a, the look at the cost of inaction. Okay? Nothing changes until something changes. You decide, it's too scary. I don't feel safe. I don't believe in myself, so on and so forth. What can happen if we don't take action? Man, that, that complacency, which leads to uh, perhaps any kind of mental challenge such as anxiety or depression, right? Those are the top. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of people deal with that, whether it be daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. Mm -hmm. um, as you talk about a lot, poor identity, which leads to us going down a path that we may or may not want to go down. Right. And for me, it's the poor health outcomes, right? I was, I literally think of this as a thing that happened to me that I'm very fortunate about, right? In my early 20s, I experienced a lot of health issues that forced me into looking at my health and being like, whoa, I have a lot more control than I recognized from before. Mm -hmm. And it's going to help me live a better, longer, happier, healthier life. So poor health mm -hmm. comes at whether for some people, they get a wake up call in their 20s. Some people, it's not until their 50s or 60s. And some people, it's not till later in life. And all of a sudden, you have a diagnosis, right? that can change yep. your life. Yeah. That's where change is forced upon you. Mm -hmm. And that's, listen, any change is, is, is good change, right? Sometimes change can be really tough and usually it should be, there should be a lot of constriction to change or it's really not changing something that needs to be changed. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so you should have restriction before you go into any type of change yet the change we want to avoid is the heart attack. The change we want to avoid is the divorce. The change that we want to avoid is creating or repeating the trauma loop within our family to our kids. That's what we want to avoid because then it's punching us in the face. Now we have to change. Right. You don't even have a choice, right? It's either change or die, change or lose a relationship, change or affect your family. Now that becomes even harder because now you're pressed into it and talk about the safety thing. Uh, uh, you ain't got it. It's now forced upon you. You must do it. And so the cost of inaction can drive us into those things that Emily talked about. Remember guys, anxiety lives in the future. Thinking about the change all the time and not doing anything will drive you crazy, which will keep you from acting because you're going to be thinking about doing the action instead of doing the action. Depression lives in the past. Oh man, I should have signed up and I didn't. I said I was going to sign up for that class and I didn't. I said I was going to do the proclivity method and I didn't. Then what do we do? See, I never get things done. Boom. Identity. Now I'm a failure. I just never can get it done. I'm always going to eat blank way, whatever it may be. Yet there's a simple way, guys. And we're going to tell you all about it. 
How do we create the change? Emily, there's three, three A's to creating change. Triple A. Like the, like the card you keep for, do you have triple A membership? <laughs> uh, I do not now, but I have in the past. Why don't you have a triple A membership? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Does your insurance company, you even want a triple A membership. You're right. <laughs> if you're broken up on the side of the road, you're going to want to be like, triple A, cool, come get me. You're correct. <laughs> Shout out to triple A. Okay. It's like two things you should have in your po- pocket, Costco membership card and triple A membership. <laughs> Anybody else out there? Hopefully somebody else is laughing with this. All right. So triple A, what are the three A's? Awareness, action, and accountability. Aw- cool. Yeah. Awareness is my, my most favorite to Dive begin in. with, right? If you're Tell like, about where do I start? Awareness, really. That is when we dive into our program, that is step number one overall. Mm-hmm. And so it's taking the time daily, hourly sometimes, weekly, monthly to become more aware of what what am I doing? Is it what I want to be doing? And how am I feeling? What are effect mm-hmm. what's affecting how I'm feeling? Mm. Right? So on the nutrition side of things, a great example is keeping a small food journal or simply going, "Hey, what did I eat today? How did I feel after I ate that?" Low energy, mm-hmm. any digestive issues, mm-hmm. a headache. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me become more aware again, and I'll look at the same meals tomorrow or different meals and see if I feel any different. Yeah, well, and you even mixed in the second one with a little bit of action, right? In terms of like having something to write down. Now mm-hmm. you're taking action, right? Because awareness is, and I've I've said this before, awareness are the dots. Okay, you guys, you guys all have dots out there right? Something happens in your relationship, right? And you learn from it and it's a dot, right? You do something with your nutrition. It's a dot. Something happens at work, a dot. Somebody said something, a dot, but there's a difference between having a bunch of dots, awareness. I know those dots are there and connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. A lot of us struggle. Oh, I know. You know, I got this thing with my my mom, which affects me, you know, this and that, or, oh, I know, I, I know how to eat. Okay. But you know, I just, it, th- this, that, or another, yet we're not connecting the dots. We're not recognizing. Yeah. I know I need to drink more water. Yeah. But are you recognizing that you're not drinking enough water with the right electrolytes and why you're not drinking and enough water <laughs> and why you're not drink? Let's just connect that dot. Let's, uh, let's drink 96 ounces with two elements today and see what happens. And then they go, oh my gosh, awareness. Yet, this is our point here in terms of awareness, action, and accountability. It's really hard. We can have awareness without actually connecting the dots. A lot of times, we need somebody to help us see past the tree to see the forest. Because we're stuck just looking right at the uh, the tree, mm-hmm. not realizing there's an entire forest behind us. Mm-hmm. So step one is being able to go, I see the dots. I understand. And just like Emily said, lots of questions, questions, questions. Okay. What's the second one? Action, right? Without taking action, <laughs> nothing's going to happen. And I find for a lot of people, this is a challenging part um, because they think the action needs to be a certain way. Mm-hmm or look a certain way or be a certain thing. And right when it, so one of our best examples is it comes back to movement. You don't have to go to the crazy workout class to get started with movement. You can do burpees, air squats, lunges, push ups if you have five minutes and that could be your workout for the day. Mm-hmm. Don't mm-hmm. let perfection be the enemy of good. Yeah. Yeah. Actions repeated daily creates a habit a habit continuously repeated creates the identity start low on your actions being able to do 25 air squats a day for seven days a week that's how we create a habit not being able to hit the crazy hard workout two times we're not creating a habit there 
After we've done 25 air squats for an entire month, 30 days, now we can start talking about, cool, now on Monday, let's do a workout. And then the other six days, let's do 25 air squats. Mm -hmm. Let's keep the habit because then what happens? You do the habit and then you're like, man, I move every day. That's what I do. Boom. There's the identity. But if we take the barrier and it's too tall, too hard, too aggressive, it's going to be too much. Then what are we going to do? We're going to say that we have this awareness. Ah, I know I always get started and then I, I stop. Well, you get started because you're trying to climb Mount Everest mm -hmm. straight from the beginning. And if we create that poor identity, then we create the poor health. Mm -hmm. So we got action. So we're getting closer to change yet. We're still not there. Awareness doesn't create change. Awareness and action doesn't create total all the time change. What's the last one that we truly believe in? Accountability. Right? What's that? There's some, some personalities, right, where they can hold themselves accountable. That's not the majority. <laughs> the majority are we need someone or something to hold us accountable to at least get the habit started to create that new identity. Mm -hmm. So whether that be hiring a coach, whether that be making a deal with your friend to meet at the fitness class Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whether that be a, a new a program, right, whatever that is, someone else is going to hold you accountable to show up and actually take action. And Emily's, as you guys know, much sweeter than I. <laughs> it depends, right? She's all kind and nice. I'm, I draw the line a lot harder. Put your money where your mouth is. A lot of people talk that they want change. But then the money comes on the line. You, you're talking about paying two highly qualified coaches to literally create change. Oh, no, no. That's that, you know, I just don't have that investment. Really? Cool. What if it was free? Oh, yeah, I would totally do it. Then what are you saying about yourself? That you're not willing to invest into you? You're willing to invest into a car. You're willing to invest into a house. You're willing to invest into all these things, but you're not willing to invest into you. Ah, there's the identity. So putting your money where your mouth is, I've done it many, many times. I've spent over $40,000 on my education and I'll keep doing it. I have coaches now. I will keep paying coaches. I'm doing singing lessons. You know why? Because if I try to do singing on my own, you know how much I've learned in three weeks of singing lessons compared to me just trying to sing in my car? Astronomical. Right? I or took, you, or I was going to say, ahead. where you get the thought pattern, I'm like, oh, I can just YouTube it for free. But do you actually do it? No. The answer is no. <laughs> Very few people do. Mm -hmm. So being able to put your money where your mouth is is where real change starts happening. So we're going to wrap this up. We're going to give you something very tangible to do right now. And then you want to take it away? You want me to do it? You, you, you do it. Your, okay, this is perfect. You. This, this is my jam. Life coach coming in hot. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to pause right now. I want you to get a pen and a piece of paper. Do this. Trust me. You'll want to. Press pause right now. Just a couple minutes. Cool. This is what we're going to do. I want you to say to your phone, hey, Siri, set a timer for three minutes. Three minutes starting now. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and what I want you to do is I want you to write down all the things that are a limiting factor for you in your life. Anything. My weight, my nutrition, my relationship, my work, my, my hangnail. My relationship with my mom, my relationship with my dad, my relationship with my husband, being a better mother, being a better father, being in better shape, doesn't matter. Put it down. Take three minutes and do that right now. Then I want you to come back and I want you to circle the top three. The top three that are just ugh, the thorn in the side. Now you have it. You have your top three. If you did this, Trust me, it's well worth your three minutes because now you have the three things that are like, oh man, this is really getting me. Okay. 
You're aware of it now. You're welcome. The second part is the action. What is one thing you can do right now? Literally pausing this podcast and doing it right now. If you, if it's your weight, is it pausing, going to proclivity.co and signing up for a clarity call? Is it? Do it. Is it if you want to exercise more, calling the gym right now and saying, I want to pay for a month in full right now, right now, do it. Is it getting the shoes, the what up, taking the action right now? And then who's going to hold you accountable? What coach can you pay? What can you put out on your Instagram right now to every single person that follows you? In the next 30 days, I'm going to do 15 air squats. Follow along. Guaranteed that if you put that on your Instagram, Facebook, whatever, you're going to do those, those uh, air squats. Pay for a coach. Pay a lot of money for a coach. Now you're really making change. There's a difference between paying $20 for an online program and $2,000 for a three-month in-depth program. Would you agree, Coach Emily? I agree. <clears throat> and I used to be one of those people too. Like, God, oh, again, I can figure it out on my own. I know all the things I need to do. Again, well, why haven't you done them? Yes. Yes. Then she started working with me and I was like, <laughs> we spend all the money. Yep. And I see, I get it now. I get it. Yep. Yep. So there it is, you guys. Daily drive. There's my three minutes. <laughs> Daily drive talking about change. We talked about why change doesn't happen. The cost of inaction when it comes to change. The three A's of awareness, action, and accountability. And we gave you literally step-by-step. Step, if you did that, you're going to be staring the three things that you want to change most. If you need help with that, reach out to us. We are here to help. We are professionals in our field. We do the thing. So let us know. Anything else, Emily? No. Thanks, Joel. Excited for everyone out there who wrote something down, who took one little step to action. Beautiful. You guys, thank you so much for joining us on the Proclivity Podcast. If you liked what you heard today, please like, subscribe, and review. The review is huge. If you've heard me say this before and you're like, oh, I should review, please do it for Emily's sake. <laughs> you don't have to do it for me, <laughs> but do it for Emily. It, it, joking aside, very much appreciated. It's real serious. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate you guys. We'll see you on the next episode. And until best day ever. That's right.